Welcome back. Today I'm going to be telling you the story of how I got diagnosed with Ellis Danlos syndrome and how I learned to walk all within the same period. So it's a bit crazy, but let's get going. Now when it comes to diagnosis stories with Ellis Danlos syndrome, I would say that I'm quite lucky because it didn't take me very long to get diagnosed, but the situations around my diagnosis were not the best which is why I got diagnosed so quickly. Whereas some people can wait years for a diagnosis and some people may never actually get the diagnosis they're looking for. Which is why I count myself as quite fortunate that I did get diagnosed quickly and then was able to get the help that I needed. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a rare genetic connective tissue disorder, which means that it affects all of the connective tissue in your body. It takes up a wide spectrum, so some people have severe symptoms and some people are relatively lucky and can have it go undiagnosed throughout their whole life. My story starts when I was 14 years old and I was in PE with my friends. We were all playing a big game of rounders and I was at the back of the field and the ball got hit towards me so I picked it up and I absolutely lobbed it to the person at second base and this caused my shoulder to dislocate but it didn't stay out, it dislocated and then it went back in. So I went to hospital, got an x-ray and it was all fine and then from here my shoulder just kept getting weaker and weaker and weaker and it got so weak to the point where it would dislocate weekly sometimes even daily so this was already a struggle that i was having and i ended up going to see a specialist in shoulder instability at a hospital in london so i was really fortunate to get that help through my gp it is however on the 8th of october 2016 that my diagnosis story really starts now unfortunately this is my dad's birthday and i'm so sorry dad but i couldn't help it I was attending a theatre group which I'd done every Saturday since I was about seven years old and I was in dance and our teacher had decided today was the day we were going to tackle pirouettes. So she'd shown us the technique, she showed us how to do it and it was time for us to give it a go by ourselves. So I prepared and as I went to spin and turn my arms in, my body turned but my leg didn't. So my supporting leg, which was my right leg, stayed exactly where it was until I fell to the floor. Now as soon as I hit the floor, I knew something was wrong. I was in so much pain. I can't even tell you, it was awful. I had managed to dislocate every joint in my right leg. So I dislocated my ankle, my knee and my hip all at the same time. It was the first time I'd ever dislocated a joint that wasn't my shoulder, so it was a really strange experience for me, and I instantly lost feeling in the whole of my leg and just had pins and needles in my foot. An ambulance was called and they took me to hospital, and I was in a &E for quite a few hours, and they did some x-rays, and while I was waiting, my knee and my ankle had been put back in, but something was going on with my hip that they didn't quite understand. It appeared like my hip had dislocated and gone back in, but something else in my hip was still stuck and I couldn't move my leg at all. I then got admitted to the children's ward while we waited for orthopaedics to come and they ended up coming the next day. So then they sort of didn't really know what was going on and that they would try and get it sorted as soon as possible because all my x-rays now looked fine because every joint was back in place. But I still couldn't move my leg and I still couldn't feel it. So while we were waiting for orthopaedics to come up with whatever they were going to come up with, I started having physio every single morning at 7am while I was in hospital. We started with just getting me to the edge of the bed, sitting up. We moved on to standing up with both of them holding me. But when I was stood up, I couldn't tell you if my foot was on the floor or not because I had no feeling in my whole leg at this point still. So I was just stood, but I was like waving like this. And I, I had no idea, I couldn't tell you. This carried on for quite some time. We had about a month, I want to say, of me being in hospital. And physios coming every morning at 7 o'clock. And orthopaedics still not really having a clue what was going on. And this was a really scary time for me because I was a dancer. I was going to join the army. Like, my whole life was just about to collapse in front of me and it was awful. And I was only 15 and this was a lot for a 15 year old to take in. I had some doctors coming up to me telling me I was never going to walk again. I had some doctors coming up to me telling me I was faking it. I had other doctors coming up to me telling me they had no idea what was going on. It was, it was a really confusing time, I have to say. It was at this point where I made loads of friends on the ward because obviously I'd been there for a month by this point and I was having a conversation with my mum and another boy's mum who was in the bed opposite me called Riley. He has a charity so I will link it in the description below. And his lovely mum came over to me and my mum and was talking about how I was going to have to find a new normal. Now at that time that was a lot for me to digest but 
sitting here today, I can say that that is the statement that drives me an awful lot. And that is why I've started this journey. It's taken me four years, but I've realised that she is right and she knew exactly what she was talking about. And I'm so thankful for her and all the support she gave us while we were in hospital. It was around this point that my mum overheard the orthopaedics talking about me in the corridor. And they were chatting about the iliotibial band, which is a band of fibre that runs on the outside of your hip. And they were saying that they think mine was stuck on the wrong side. Fortunately, we have a friend who I'd been seeing before, who's sort of like a physiotherapist chiropractor like he just does everything really he's incredible and he came to hospital and he helped to unsnap the band because we were having a lot of problems at the hospital i won't be able to fit them all in this video but i'm sure i will one day because i know that loads of other people struggle the same way that i did when i was in hospital but that's just too much to fit into one video so he came and unsnapped my iliotibial band from my hip and then i got an mri scan on my leg which showed that I had bursitis over my hip, which is just a collection of fluid and inflammation within the hip. So I ended up getting a steroid injection into my hip, which would help with the pain a lot. After this, I went to a pain management doctor while I was still an inpatient at this hospital, and she gave me painkillers, which I still take to this day. It was at this point that we were fortunate enough to meet a friend of a friend who has now become a huge family friend and a huge support for me and my family and she was just incredible throughout this whole time because she has a condition similar to me so she was able to offer that advice and support that we needed in that moment throughout this whole time we've passed about two months now and i've been having physio every single morning i've got to the stage now where i can stand up quite solidly because i've still got my supporting leg but unfortunately i am unable to use the crutches because my shoulders are so weak, so walking is proving difficult, and I still didn't have all the feeling back in my leg yet, so I wasn't able to go home because it wasn't deemed safe. We agreed with my physiotherapist team and my doctors that I was able to go home when I could get up and down the stairs safely. Now, as you can probably tell, in this room, I'm on the third story. This is the roof of the third story house, which is less than ideal for someone who can't feel their leg and is in a wheelchair. However, it was at this point my mum came up with a genius idea of swapping over my bedroom on the third floor with my stepsister's bedroom on the second floor. Now, it was quite a downgrade, let me tell you that, because she does have a much smaller room because she isn't at this house as much as I am. But honestly, we just had to do it to get me home because I was so ready to be out of hospital. At the end of my second month in hospital, I did get discharged, but it was too premature and I couldn't yet do the stairs. But we just wanted to see if it was possible for me to live at home safely. And unfortunately, we got proved wrong very, very quickly. As within not even an hour of being back at home, I had fallen down and injured my hip again and ended up back pretty much where I started, which was so awful. Now, this time we knew what was wrong with my hip, so it was a lot easier to fix in accident and emergency, and I got readmitted back literally into the same bed that I just left an hour ago. And all we had to do was wait for the physios to come the next morning and we would start that again. Physios come at seven o'clock the next morning, right on time, as they always did. And we went to this corridor. Now this corridor is where I had spent every morning doing physio with them. It was just a corridor that connected two wards, but it was somewhere where we could measure the distance that I was going and see how far I could walk with the physio's help. I spent the next month every morning walking up and down this corridor as best I could with one physio holding this hand and one physio holding this hand and honestly I was just so determined because now it was nearly Christmas and I was determined to make it home in time for Christmas. My final discharge from hospital was on December the 24th, okay? I was so close, I so nearly didn't make it, but I got out of hospital in time for Christmas and I was so thankful. I was able to go up and down the stairs safely. I was able to use crutches as we'd worked on my shoulder stability and my shoulder strength while I was in hospital. And I was able to weight bear on my leg more, which made the whole thing a lot easier. And we'd purchased my wheelchair, which you'll have seen in my wheelchair video, which I will link in the description. After this, I continued with physio weekly. I wish I had more videos of it, but it was one of those times where it was just so traumatic and there was so much going on that I didn't want to be on camera. It was the last thing my parents were thinking about and I think we all just wanted that time to be over with. 
I believe it was about two weeks after I'd been discharged from that hospital, we'd had a lovely Christmas and my mum had been researching a lot and she'd found a specialist in the condition that we believed I had, which was Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So he was a specialist at a hospital in London. Now, unfortunately he was private, so we did have to pay for him, but we were willing to do that to get the diagnosis. So we went and saw him and he diagnosed me with hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And that day was brilliant. We were so thankful to him. He took so much time. We spoke through every single thing that I'd had wrong with me medically since like the day I was born. He was so thorough. He was lovely as well. He was really understanding. And he gave us that diagnosis. I am so thankful to my physios at that time, especially because they were the ones that worked hardest with me. I still saw them every week after I left hospital for about a year. They even came to my school and sat with my school and discussed how we could make my life easier, which I will probably make a video on in the future. But they played a massive key role in me getting back to where I am now. It was around the end of January when I had learned to walk without my crutches and my nerve damage had healed so that I had enough feeling in my leg to be able to walk on it. The only thing I struggled with was telling where my foot was on the floor and where my foot was in space. From the minute I could walk without crutches, I just pushed myself to my absolute limits, okay? While I was in hospital and my life was falling down around me, I made the decision that I wanted to go to drama school, which was really quite astonishing and pretty stupid. If, if you would ask me now, I'd say that was a really silly thing of me to do. But little old Ellie back then, 15, 16 year old me, was really determined. And within two weeks of learning to walk again, I had my audition for drama school and I somehow managed to complete an entire dance round and get accepted into the school, which was really crazy and my parents were really stressed by this, but I was not going to let it stop me at all. Thinking back now, I probably should have taken into consideration the fact that my life should have changed from that point on, but I wasn't going to let it. And it's only now that I've struggled through all of that that I realise it probably wasn't the most sensible thing to do. But I'm really thankful I did it because I learned so much and I met some amazing people. And with the struggles did come some really great times. So I am thankful I did that. But I definitely would not recommend myself to go and do it again now. Ellis Daniel Syndrome is still part of my daily struggles. And if you hop over to my Instagram, which is at small underscore and underscore strong, you'll be able to follow me on my journey. And I do post about it a lot more on there than I have done on this YouTube channel so far. Because it's just one of those topics that is so huge. And I wasn't quite sure how I was going to fit it all into this video. But I've tried my best for you. If there's anything you think I've missed out, please let me know in the comments below. Or hop over to my Instagram and let me know there and we can discuss it. But that is all for now. So I will see you in my next video.